तो ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Jaiva Narottamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Praeshu Vapadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter Number 3, entitled Haranyakashipu's Plan to Become Immortal. The text is on the board for those of you who don't have any other. Sri Narada Uvacha Haranyakashipu Rajan Ajayam Ajaramaram Ajayam Atmanam Apridvanvan Apraman Apraditvandvam Ekarajam Yadit Sata Ekarajam Yadit Sata Srina Radovacha Haranyakashi Purajan Ajayam Ajaramaram Atmanam Aprit Vanvam Ekarajam Vyaditsata Sri Narada Uvacha Haranyakashi Purajan Ajayam Ajaramaram Atmanam Apradit Vangvam Ekarajam Vyaditsata
वैष्णवी श्री नारद उपाचारण्य काशीपो दमानिक किंग हरण्य काशीपो राजन ओ किंग Ajayam, unconquerable by any enemy. No enemy can take it. Ajara, without old age or or disease. No disease or disease. Amaram, immortal. Atmanam, Atmanam himself. Apratidvanvam, without any rival or opponent. Ekarajam. The, the one king of the universe. Yadisata desire to become. Translation: Narada Muni said to Maharaj Yudhisthira, "The demonic king Haranyakashipu." Wanted to be unconquerable and free from old age and dwindling of the body. He wanted to gain all the yogic perfections like anima and lagima, to be deathless and to be the only king of the entire universe, including Brahma Loka. Narada Muni 对有地帝王说：“邪恶的君王希望让他西部，想要不被征服、不变老，身体功能从不减退。他想要得到可以变得比栗子还小、比红毛还轻等所有的瑜伽神通，想要永生不死，想要成为包括库尤拉玛星球在内的。”Purport by Shri Prabhupada. Such are the goals of the austerities performed by demons. Harani Kashipu wanted to receive a benediction from Lord Brahma, so that in the future he would be able to conquer Lord Brahma's abode. Similarly, another demon received a benediction from Lord Shiva, but later wanted to kill Lord Shiva through that same benediction. 
the self-interested persons by demoniac austerity want to kill even their benefactors, whereas the Vaishnava wants to remain an ever-existing servant of the Lord and never to occupy the post of the Lord. The, through through Sayuja Mukti, which is generally demanded by Asuras, one merges into the existence of the Lord. But although one sometimes thus achieves the goal of the theory of monism, one falls down again to struggle in material existence.这种自私自利的人想要通过邪恶的苦行杀死甚至是祝福他们的与他们恰恰相反至尊主的奉献者关心阿瓦想要永远当至尊主的仆人永远都不想去占有至尊主的职位融入汉光的解脱通常是恶魔才会想要生物想获得这个解脱融入至尊主的存在然而人即使若是能达到这种意愿恶的目标也还会再次堕落在物质存在中苦苦挣扎万恰高巴特鲁比斯恰，Kripa-sindhu-bhayevacha，patita-nam-pavanebhyo，Vaishnavibhyo，namo-namah，Jai Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're hearing Narada Muni instruct Maharaj Yudhisthira, telling him about the appear. He's going to tell him about the appearance of Lord Nishringadev. 我们都在聆听那个目的下的第四天王说到主那个星号 So he is describing how in the beginning Haranyakashipu wanted to get benedictions from Lord Brahma 他讲到一开始呢 Generally, the demons they worship demigods like Brahma or Shiva or other demigods. In Bhagavad Gita, in the sixteenth chapter, Lord Krishna describes there are two natures. There's Daivi Sampad and Asuric Sampad. The two na one is divine nature and the other is demoniac nature. And it's also described that there are different kinds of austerities. There is austerity in goodness, austerity in passion, and austerity in ignorance. 
So Haranya Kashipu, he was of course born as a demon. He was one of the sons of Diti. Right? There were many there were daughters of Daksha, many girls. And two sisters are very prominent. One is Aditi, she was the mother of the demigods, and the other is Diti, she's the mother of two demons. So, Aditi, we heard about her, she was the, one of the, the mother of Lord Vamana Devi. And her husband was Kashyap. So Kashyap had many wives. And two prominent ones were Diti and Aditi. So Aditi, she gave birth to the demigods, and Diti gave birth to demons. So Haranya Kashipu, he was the son, he was, there were two brothers, Haranyaksha and Haranya Kashipu. And they were born in the womb of Diti. By the father was Kashya. So the demons generally they want they will worship the demigods. They will worship them to get material benediction. So, Haranyakashipu, he wanted to get benediction from Lord Brahma. And it mentions here the different benedictions he wanted. He wanted to be unconquerable, that he should always be able to conquer everyone else. And he did. He conquered the demigods at one point and he was controlling heaven. And even Narada Muni was having to do service for Haranyakashipu. So Haranyakashipu wants to be unconquerable, he wants to be supremely powerful in the universe. And he wanted that he would he would not get old and he would not get sick. And his body would, should not age. He wanted this this kind of benediction. Of course, there's many people today want these kind of benedictions. Common people want these benedictions. Right. But not they don't know how to get it. They they may want these things, but they don't know how to achieve them. But Haranyakashipu knew how to get this kind of benediction. Haranyakashipu knew how to get this kind of benediction. 
and he worshipped Lord Brahma. And he wanted Lord Brahma should give him that benediction. That he would not die. Of course, Brahma said, but I can't give you that because I also have to die. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes a Brahma Bhuvana Loka from the highest planet. The planet, highest planet in the universe is Brahma Loka, from the highest planet down to the lowest. Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Punar Avartanu Arjuna. So everywhere there is birth and death in the material world. And even if you're at the top of the universe, like Lord Brahma, he also has to worry about that. So Brahma told Tarani Kashipu, I can't give you these things. But Harani Kashipu is very clever man, very thoughtful, and he thought, well, all right, you cannot make me deathless, but at least give me the benediction that I will not die in the day or in the night. The demons are very clever people. But Krishna is more clever. <laughs> they think they're so smart. They think, I will not die in the day, I will not die in the night. They think, I won't die. But there's a time between the day and the night. You can die at that time. So, Haranyakashipu was trying to get benediction, trying to get this benediction that he would not die, but he could not get the, the full benediction. He, should, he said, I want the benediction, I should not die on the land or in the water or in the air. And I should not be killed by any man or any animal. And I should not be killed by any weapon. He was trying to take so many benedictions so that he could live forever. So Prabhupada talks how people who get these kind of benedictions, they're very sinful and foolish people. And Prabhupada says sometimes they will get a benediction from someone, then they may want to kill the person who gave them the benediction. And 
And Prabhupada talks about how there was a person who worshipped Lord Shiva. He was a big demon named Vrikasura. And he was worshipping Lord Shiva and he would cut flesh off of his body. He would not put gr grains, he would, he would make a fire, but he would not put grains or ghee. He would just cut flesh off his body and put it in the fire. You can see this kind of austerity sometimes. You can see it even today, people. As, especially if you go to the Kumbha Mela. The Kumbha Mela takes place once every 12 years. In the place where the Ganga meets the Yamuna. It's a holy place. And they say once every 12 years, the planets of the, the positions of the planets is very auspicious. And if you take your bath in the place where the Ganga meets the Yamuna at that time, they say you will get liberation. Of course, you have to go at the proper time, it's in the month of Mag. Month of Mag means January, February. So it's very cold at that time. Especially if you go to the, this place where the Ganga meets the Yamuna, it's North India and it can be quite cold. And millions of people come. And they have to take bath early in the morning. Then you go into the river early, about four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning, take the morning bath. There's the auspicious time. They will tell you the auspicious time. So millions of people come every 12 years to that place. And some people, they come from the Himalayas, all the sadhus who live in the Himalayas, they will come down once every 12 years, they'll come just to take bath at that time. Some of the people are hundreds of years old. But they don't look, they look like young people. Because they're doing pranayama. Pranayama, kunjur husi. Pranayama, kunjur husi. Kunjur husi. husi. Yeah. 
And by doing that, they live in the cave in the Himalayas. And they're doing the pranayama. And they live, they, they slow down the breathing rate. And they can live hundreds of years. So they come to the take bath once every 12 years. And some of these people, they're more in the mode of ignorance. Although they're doing tapasya, they have strong material desires. So this man Vrikasura, he was a devotee of Shiva. He wanted to get a blessing from Shiva. So he built a fire and he cut flesh off his body. And he offered it into the fire. Yes. Mm. But Lord Shiva was not coming, he would not appear. So he thought, how to get Lord Shiva? I want Lord Shiva, he should come to see me. So he decided, I will cut my head off and offer my head to Lord Shiva. So he took his bath in very cold water, took his bath and he was just getting ready to cut off his head. He had long hair, you know. Generally the Shivites, they don't shave their head, they have the long hair. They get their power from the long hair. The devotees, we get power when we cut the hair. <laughs> But the Shivites, they get their power by having the long hair. Mm. So he had long hair, he was ready to cut off his head. But just as he was going to cut off his head, Lord Shiva came. So when Lord Shiva came, then Vrikasura was happy. So he told, so Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva knew that the Vrikasura, he wants something from me, he's going to ask something from me. So Lord Shiva asked Vrikasura, what is it you want from me? So Vrika said, I want the benediction that if ever I touch someone's head, their head should fall off. So Lord Shiva thought, how horrible, what a horrible benediction. Only demon would ask something like that. But Lord, Lord, but Lord Shiva had to give him the benediction. 
And because, so then what happened? Vrikasura wanted to touch Lord Shiva's head. And he wanted, he said, let me test it. I will just test it. I will test it on Lord Shiva. <laughs> Lord Shiva said, no, no. Lord Shiva ran away. <laughs> and Vrikasura chased him. <laughs> come back, come back. I want to touch your head. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Lord Shiva's running. Of course, Lord Shiva was fortunate because Lord Shiva is a very dear devotee to Lord Vishnu. Lord Shiva is a Vaishnava. So when, when Lord Vishnu saw that Shiva was in difficulty, then he disguised himself. He took the form of a young Brahmana boy. And the young Brahmana boy came and said to Lord Shiva, he said to Vrikasura, he said, what's happening, Vrika? What's going on? Why are you running like this? And so Vrika said, he said, no, Shiva gave me a benediction. I want to test my benediction. So Lord Vishnu said to him, he said, oh, he said, you know, you cannot believe Lord Shiva. You know, Lord Shiva, he's been acting very funny these days. He tells so many things. You cannot believe him. And Lord Vishnu said to Vrikasura, he said, you touch your own head and you see, nothing will happen. He said, Shiva, he tricked, he's tricked you. He didn't give you this benediction. So, Vrikasura, really? Shiva would do like that? So he put his hand on his head. <laughs> Boom! And Vrikasura's head fell off. So Lord Shiva was saved by the grace of Vishnu. So Prabhupada said, this, this is common for the demons to do like that to people. People who are just interested in their own gain, they will kill even the people who give, who help them. You may try to help someone, you're trying to help them, you do a lot to help them, and sometimes they will just come back at you and they'll do some terrible thing, they may even try to kill you. But a devotee would never act like that. The devotee is always the servant of the Lord. 
and the devotee never wants to become the Lord. But some people, the impersonalists, they want to become the Supreme Lord. So this impersonal philosophy, this is very common among the demons. They want to merge into the Supreme Lord. And Prabhupada says sometimes they also do it, they actually can achieve that. They, mer they may merge into the body of the, the Supreme Lord. They may become one with the Supreme. But they, they cannot stay there for very long. They fall back again to the material world. So this is the problem with the impersonal liberation. That they are trying to become one with the Supreme. But they cannot stay there in that position for very long. In if they can, if they do come to that stage of perfection, they cannot stay there forever. So we have to understand that these impersonalists, this impersonal philosophy, this is a, definitely not pleasing to Lord Krishna. The Lord Krishna wants us to be engaged in his service. He wants to see us do service. He is pleased when a someone will offer service to him. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, by devotion he can be understood. Krishna is pleased. We, even, we offer simple things, a leaf, a fruit, flower, water, but he wants the devotion. Krishna is not greedy to get fruits and flowers. He has many goddesses of fortune all serving him. He wants to enjoy devotion. That is pleasing to him. Not the mood of the demon who want to become one, who want to merge, entering into his existence. So impersonal liberation is never accepted by a devotee. Because there's no opportunity to engage in service anymore. 
you go into the you enter into the Brahman and become one with Krishna, then there's no activity. There's no there's no variety. There's only the oneness. It's very boring. If it's all one, then it's very boring. If just imagine you go somewhere and there's only you, nobody else there. We're the only one there. Will you be happy there for long? We like company, we like pleasure, we like variety. We like to be with other people. But if it's only one, there's only one, there's no activity. Nobody to talk to. Nobody to show off to. Nobody to play with. Nobody to take care of you. And you don't. It, it's just very boring. There's no. There's no activity. So that is the problem with Sayuja Mukti. That a devotee never wants that kind of liberation. A devotee doesn't want liberation, he wants devotional service. Devotional service is greater than liberation. Liberation is not for devotees. Devotees are already liberated because we're doing devotional service, we're liberated. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Buddha Prasanatma. One who knows their Brahman, then their Prasanatma, they're a joyful soul. So that is the liberated platform. Devotional service begins on the liberated platform. But for the demons, their goal is to get liberation. Because they're thinking, now I am God. So, in the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the demoniac nature. He's, he's uh, Ishwaraham, I am the controller. Right? We want to be the Ishwara. We are tiny Ishwaras. We are not even able to control our own mind. What kind of Ishwara we can? Mm. So Ishwaraham Ahambogi, I am the enjoyer. We want to enjoy. But 
nothing is ours to enjoy. Enjoying is for the proprietor. If it's your car, you can enjoy the car. I cannot enjoy your car. So enjoyment is for the person who owns, owns the thing. But what do we own? We come to this world with nothing. And when we, we, we came with nothing, we came naked with no Lord Krishna, when he appeared in the world, he was fully dressed and decorated with all ornaments. So nothing was ours. But we are thinking this is mine. And I will get more. And we make plans how we will get more. I will get more money and more power and more fame. And this way I will enjoy. We want to enjoy, but we are trying to enjoy the body. And the body is just giving us trouble. We want to enjoy. The real pleasure comes not from the body, it comes from the soul. We have to change the consciousness. So Ishwaraham, Aham Bogi, Siddhoham. I have cities, I have yoga powers. Haranyakashipu wanted yoga powers also. He wanted to use his yoga powers to control other people. But the yoga powers, you can get these things very easily today. Right? You want the power to cross water, to walk on the water. So you may do a lot of yoga and learn to walk across the water. We have our great yogis here. Yeah, right. Right. But if if they can walk over the water, we can go on the boat. Somebody is walking on the water. Why? It takes so many years to get the power to walk on water, but you can go on the boat. So, why take so much trouble to walk on the water? Just go on the boat. So, the, but the demon is thinking, 
I am powerful, I have this power. And then the demon thinks, Siddhoham Balavam Sukhi, I am Bala, I am strong. Strong, nobody can, nobody can stop me, nobody can go against me, you have to do what I say. And Sukhi, I am happy. At least the demon thinks they are happy. They are thinking. But the body, their happiness is in the body, it's very temporary. Their happiness finishes very quickly. Real happiness is not in the body. Real happiness comes from the soul. And everyone can experience that happiness of the soul when you start to chant Hare Krishna and do devotional service. We can feel the difference as soon as you begin to chant and do service for Krishna. You feel the change in the body and mind. So we want to change all the demons to devotees. We want to teach them how to do bhakti yoga. And the demons can become devotees. And no devotees will become demons. <laughs> the devotees' name, they're already in the book. Krishna got the names of the devotees in the book. They're going back to Godhead. But the demons, we have to make them devotees. And then they can also go back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. Okay, any question? I heard that there are many devotees can do some bad magic or evil methods to harm devotees. Uh, sometimes they will make them feel very painful that can they and also uh, their ways are very painful and they will feel very tired, sleepy, uh, such uh, those things. Um, I want to ask uh, whether this kind of devotee they can go back back to Godhead. Well, that I don't know what kind of devotee you're talking about. I've never heard of a devotee like that. If somebody is a devotee, devotees have good qualities. One who is a devotee is blessed by the demigods. 
And they have all the good qualities. They won't have any of these bad qualities which you're speaking about. If someone's really a devotee, then they have very good qualities. Prabhupada was on the television program and the man asked him, the interviewer asked him, how would we recognize a devotee? And Prabhupada said, he will be a perfect gentleman. In other words, he'll have good qualities. He is not going to do harm and trouble people. Devo De devotees give their help, they're caring for others, they benefit others. Right, we offer our obeisances to the Vaishnavas every day. They are full of compassion for the fallen conditioned soul. To try to understand a devotee. If I go wrong, I have to say, 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 然后呢，往往呢，就是我们对前的在与他们打交道的时候啊，如果就是如果过度的谦卑，是不是被他们看作比较低下的？谢谢。Hare Krishna, obeisances. I want to ask uh, how to deal with uh, non-devotees because non-devotees. Um, they will look down upon the devotees who has humility and so I would want to know how to deal with those uh, non-devotees if we deal with them with humility. Well, yes, a devotee deals with everyone humbly because we see Krishna in everyone's heart. Krishna is in the heart of the demons and the non-devotees also. So if you have to deal with them, you should deal with them politely. And try to give them Krishna consciousness. We offer them nice prasadam. Even the demons like prasadam. So you can offer them prasada. You can be just speak some friendly words with them. Make make friends with them. And they can also one day become devotees. Right? They're, you, they may not be devotees. 
they're not devotees because they never got any devotional association. They never got the opportunity to be with devotees, but they can also become devotees. It just takes one devotee to change them. So give them mercy. Right. Chidokin 如果你按照这样的去修炼的话，你肯定可以回收神的。This society is a society of pure devotees. 这一个科学自觉学会就是纯粹奉献者的心。A devotee as Prabhupada. Prabhupada, apart from you, are there any pure devotees on the planet? Prabhupada said, how many people do we have in our society? And so they said, more proper, maybe like 5,000. So then Prabhupada said, then there are at least 5,000 pure devotees. Yeah, if you are following the four principles and chanting every day, then that is pure devotion. Of course, there are different levels of pure devotees. You know, there are pure devotees like Prabhupada, and there are pure devotees like Vyasadev and Narada Muni. They're all on different levels. There are many different levels of pure devotees. But they all go back to God. So you can also go back to God then. Just keep following the four principles. And chant your rounds every day. And Krishna will come and take you back to God. Yeah. 
Hare Krishna. Well, you have to understand there are different places in the spiritual sky. Just like if you get liberation, then you enter into the light, into that effulgence, the light. You don't enter into the spiritual planets, you just enter into the light. You become, you know, a beam of light. Mm. But if you get devotion, then you enter into the spiritual planet. You get devotional service, you enter into the spiritual kingdom, into the kingdom of God, not just into the spiritual sky. So liberation, I said, for devotee, not interested. The devotee can have liberation anytime. But devotees want devotional service. They want to be with Krishna and to enjoy the association in the company of Krishna. Chanting and dancing, kirtan, taking prasadam, all of these activities are going on in the spiritual world, but not in the spiritual sky. In the platform of liberation, there's only the oneness. No activity. No variety. No friends. You want to go there? Devotee doesn't want that. So we want devotional service, we want engagement, we want activities. And when we are properly engaged, then we all stay engaged in these activities. We say sanatana dharma, eternal religion. 
But the impersonal liberation that is temporary. You won't keep it for you won't stay there for long. Because we need activity. The nature of the soul is to be active. And if there's no activity, then we'll go some other place. Go back to the material world. Okay? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I'm Kisak Samadhi, this is Krishna Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, my question is, uh, we hear in the past time that Jai and Vijay, they take three demonic, uh, three birds as demons. Uh, so first Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, then Ravana Kumbhakarna and uh, Dantra Bhadra. But then in Kali Yuga, we also hear that they came as Jai and Vijay. So their curse was three birds. Uh, sorry, Jagai Mata and Jagai Mata. Yeah. Their curse was uh, three demonic birds, but why is there a fourth one, Guru Maharaj? Guru Maharaj, I well, I've never actually seen it anywhere that it said that Jai and Vijay came as J Jagai Madai. I've never, I've never seen it in any scripture. I've heard it said, but I haven't actually read it anywhere. But we could imagine if it's true, why would they come? They would come to take part in the most merciful pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. They want, they want to enjoy the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and take part in Sankirtan and get the greatest mercy. Mahaprabhu is giving Krishna Prem out to everyone. They want to get Krishna Prem. They could not get it in the other times. So they came to get the most valuable thing. Okay. All right, we'll stop here now. Again, we have to have some kirtan for some time, and we'll have class again later before the midday offering. We'll talk about Bhaktivinoda Thakur and all of his activities. <laughs> Okay. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.